Do you all have like a notepad and a pen to take notes? Yes. Good, good. Are you uh, feeling ready, Tina? Yeah. Um, so, hi everyone. Um, welcome to the Monsters and Music workshop. Uh, my name is Natalie. I'm with uh, Art of Collab. Um, we're like a local org in Orlando, Florida, uh, made up of artists and creatives just looking to spark collaboration community. So usually through events, workshops, um, uh, public art and so on. So this is actually like our first like workshop series. So it's been really exciting. And uh, yeah, uh, we have Gina. She was a part of our, our Rise mural. Um, if you go to our Instagram, you'll see definitely a lot of like pictures from that. Um, we had a mural put up in Eatonville and we used uh, seven artists and six poets. And uh, Gina was one of the hand lettering um, participants and uh, she definitely helped out a lot with that. And she was great and awesome. And so we were lucky to have met her and to be able to do this workshop with her. So go Gina. Hi, I'm Gina Tykwinko. I feel like most of you know me, but for those of that you don't, um, like Nath had said, they are this super amazing organization here in Orlando. And I had the opportunity to work with them on a mural project earlier this year. And one of my goals this year was to um, basically create more, but also build community to be more involved in community. And so what Art of Collaboration is doing is that in Orlando. And so I strongly encourage you all to follow them on social um, and sign up for more of these workshops because they have a few more lined up for this summer. Um, and uh, yeah, I really want to thank everyone for coming and particularly thank you, Nath and Mariah for organizing this. And I want to first say that I am actually at home in my apartment, downtown Orlando. And I just want to give a disclaimer. I live like right off a really busy street and there's like a train track. So you'll probably hear a train go by every now and then, but just, just ignore it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so thank you all for signing up. This is Mantras and Music, and it's a hand lettering workshop. And I really wanted to design this workshop around the idea of chilling, like finding your center and relaxing and just like carving out space where you can be creative. And this is different than most other hand lettering workshops that, you're, that you may or may not be aware of. Uh, most other hand lettering workshops, you really just get into the basics of hand lettering and you learn mostly just about hand lettering. And I wanted to give you all like a fuller picture of kind of my whole process and the tools that I use and how hand lettering has impacted my life, not only as a creative, but just like in general. And so Today is day is it session one, and it's going to be mostly educational. And tomorrow will be more of a hands-on approach where we will be creating together simultaneously. But today is going to be strictly educational. So we are going to provide a recording of this later. But if you want, you can take notes because I'm sure I'm going to mention a lot of things that aren't necessarily on the slide. And um, if you have any questions, uh, definitely wait until the end. Um, we are doing a IG live afterwards. So I think most of you have IG, um, but if not, we will also provide like, um, I think we can like, just keep that on our profiles, right Nath? Like the uh, yeah. Q&A? I think you, it'll just stay up there for a little bit. Um, and yeah, at least like 24 hours or something. Okay, yeah. And I know at least one of you already, you can't stay for the whole session. So don't worry, you can catch up later tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, but I basically just wanna kind of give you a rundown of the agenda for today. 
I will be giving you a little bit of background about who I am and how I got started with hand lettering. And then we are going to jump into mantras. And then we are going to talk about music and the importance of music and creativity. And I will also be sharing some of my personal ritual practices. And then we will get into the basics of hand lettering. Um, and then, and then obviously like questions at the end. And so that's kind of how today is going to go. So that being said, I'm just going to jump right into kind of talking about who I am and how I got started. So most of you who know me know everything already, but for those of you that don't know me, I am an Orlando based artist and designer and I mostly explore complicated issues and difficult relationships, and I respond to those by um, painting and hand lettering and other creative outlets. And over the past few years, I have really seen my self grow and I've really seen my art practice grow. Um, for example, I've had my first old solo art show in Indianapolis, which is actually my hometown. I was also an artist in residence at an international residency program in Mexico, which was one of the greatest experiences that I've ever had. And I can definitely say it was life changing. And my work, my artwork has been exhibited in various galleries in Orlando. Um, in addition, I illustrated the coloring book, Notes from the Universe, and my work is currently held in private collections across North America, including Canada, all over the States, and also in Mexico. Um, and on top of all of this, I do have a full-time job doing graphic and web design. And so all of these things that I do, I've done like on the side, like in the evenings, on the weekends, um, I, I just make time for it because I'm passionate about art and creativity. And um, I feel so grateful that I have a job that allows me to use my creativity. And I work with really amazing people that I love that like support and encourage me. And so I feel like since I've been in Orlando for the past few years, I've really been able to kind of like cultivate everything around me to live a more creative and fulfilling life. And so I just wanna say thank you to all of you for showing up and uh, I'm really excited about today and I hope you are too. Um, so I'm gonna minimize some things real quick. So, Oh, I'm skipping all over the place. <laughs> all right, so as I was creating this, this workshop, I was kind of going down memory lane and thanks to Instagram, you can like scroll all the way back. And I realized that my love for hand lettering was actually born eight years ago whenever I decided to do a 365 day hand lettering challenge on Instagram. And the reason why I even created an Instagram was to be able to like participate and share like publicly um, this challenge. And although I, I, I did not do like every day because that was just like way too much, but I was able to complete about 270 days. And I feel like that simple act of sitting down and creating or trying to create every day really just catapulted me into everything that I live and that I love now because from that from that you know hobby from that little challenge that I did on Instagram I was then able to develop a creative practice and I have learned how to surrender to the process and Honestly, like everything in my life expanded and it all started with me just like participating in this challenge. And I wanted to share this with you all because I know most of you probably don't really do hand lettering, 
but like who knows like you may really come to like hand lettering and if you keep at it you know things in your life might expand as well and when I went back to kind of you know figure out when I started and how I started I thought it was really interesting this picture that you all see right here it says the spire this was actually day one of the hand lettering challenge that I did. And I thought it was like really interesting that uh, I chose the word aspire because I think at the time, I don't think there was like, there were no prompts. Like the whole idea of the challenge was just to like set aside time to create. And so at that, at that time, whatever I was thinking of or whatever music I was listening to, that's what I would letter. So I started out with the word aspire. So I thought that was like very, very interesting. Um, now through hand lettering, I have learned one of the biggest lessons of my life, which is to embrace imperfection. Um, growing up and in my design work as a professional, I've always been sort of like a perfectionist. I had always been super hard on myself. I just wanted to be the best. I wanted everything right. I was, you know, very controlling of like everything that I did. And when it came to my graphic web design work, you know, there's good and bad design. You know, there are standards, there are practices that you're supposed to follow. And I think, my perfectionism like really came out with my design work because I wanted things to be perfect. I wanted pixels to be aligned and like little things. Like I was very like detail oriented. And so whenever things were not perfect, I gave myself like anxiety and like stress that I didn't need. Um, but when I started hand lettering, I learned that it's okay to, to not be perfect. And when you all start to do your own hand lettering, some of you might want to be perfect, like right off the bat. And, and I just wanna like hone in on the imperfection is what helps you develop your own style. And that's what I did. And once I learned this, I realized that embracing this, this imperfection like extended way beyond my art. It's it extended way beyond anything I could ever imagine. And through the simple act of hand lettering and kind of like letting go and embracing imperfection, I've learned to embrace imperfection in every aspect of my life. And that has allowed me to find beauty in everything. And I think that shift in perspective really helped me grow not only as an artist, but as, um, as a person. And I wanted to include this little graphic that you all see. It's a, a graphic of a bowl that uh, was basically repaired or put together. And in Japan, it's called kintsuji. And it's this idea that you may have broken objects, but you can repair it. And oftentimes when you work with the imperfections, it turns out like really beautiful. And that's how I kind of look at what I do and how I look at the world. And so with that being said, I want to jump into mantras. Now, I don't know if you all know what a mantra is, but just in case, a mantra is an affirmation to motivate and inspire you to be your best self and it can help to focus you in your experiences and just right before we started this meeting I I just had this thought um, that I wasn't I wasn't prepared to speak on but it was just like one of those moments I made a connection that was like so profound so I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a side story real quick um, because I definitely wanted to to keep this light and like super basic and I wasn't I wasn't going to like give you like a history lesson or anything like that but I just had this memory that I had to share um but before I share it I just wanted to go in depth further about what a mantra is and where it came from where um 
back in the day, like super ancient. A mantra actually originated from Hinduism in India. And the word mantra like literally means instrument of thought. And um, people have been using it for years as a tool for meditation um, in religion and in practice, Hinduism, Buddhism. And historically, mantras are used as a meditation. And I know some of you do, do yoga, so you know what I'm talking about. But uh, they use mantras as a tool to basically help change your state of mind and to elevate consciousness. And the story that I thought of right before we started was a story about uh, pretty much like early on in my childhood, um, my grandmother who unfortunately passed away earlier this year, for a period of time, she was a practicing Buddhist. And I remember when I was younger, she used to drag me to temple and I didn't know what was going on. And I remember thinking I never wanted to go. It was so long, it was so boring. But at the same time, I did find it intriguing at certain moments. And I didn't, I didn't know what a mantra was at the time. But like, when I would go to temple with her, we would say, we would chant a mantra. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with Buddhism, but there's a mantra that they use in Buddhism. And it is, it is nam myoho geko And it's basically like the miracle mantra. And it basically is like the essence of Buddhism. And with Buddhism, it's like the idea that life is suffering, right? And I feel like people worry so much about the future and the past and they kind of get bogged down with like the weight of the world. And with Buddhism, it's teaching you that we all have like a conviction within us to overcome any obstacle at any moment in time and that we truly have like the capacity to transform any suffering and that 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 mantra nam myoho geko i had no idea what that meant but i i do remember like chanting it over and over like nam myoho geko nam myoho geko nam myoho geko and although I didn't really like being dragged to temple, there is definitely something to say when you're with a group of people and you're all chanting together. And it was truly um, a, a transformational like experience. And whenever I went to temple with my grandmother, there was no one leading like these, these mantras, these chantings. But it was so powerful that although there was like, there's no conductor, there's no, there was no one leading it. As we are chanting, we kind of all just naturally sync up together. And so when we're using the mantra, it's like, we're kind of like using this like collective energy to like really feel it and really find our center and to be in rhythm with other people. And I just made that mental connection like right before we started this workshop. Um, so I just think it's interesting that like way back then, like my grandmother like planted the seed in me that has fully bloomed now. So I just, I just wanted to share that little personal story because mantras are really effective. And if you use it, you can really, you can really transform yourself. So why are mantras important? Some of the reasons I have already stated, but basically a mantra is intended to use your thoughts as a guide. It can help center your mind and by repeating your mantra, it can help guide your thoughts to a more positive and powerful mind frame. And like I said, like when I was in Buddhist temple with my grandmother and everyone around, there was this energy that was so powerful that you couldn't help but be able to like focus in on something and at the end it's like you come away feeling 
super revived and inspired and just like feeling good. And I think that is a significant reason why I think everyone should have a mantra. Now, how do you choose a mantra? Um, maybe some of you already have mantras and you're not really aware that it is a mantra and that you could use it as a tool. I'm sure a lot of you have your favorite quotes or things that you say to yourself to kind of motivate and inspire yourself. But for those of you that don't really have um, experience in mantras, I wanted to share how you could actually choose one. And I think the best way to choose a mantra is to really just take some time for yourself and sit in quiet and think about the words and the phrases that are meaningful to you. And I encourage you to just like kind of let things come to you. Like don't really force it, but let the words come to the surface. And after you decide on your philosophy, I think you should find a quotation either by someone else or create your own. Um, for me, short, powerful statements are usually best at focusing and allowing us to return to them because it's important that you're able to recall the mantra in times of stress and crisis. And when it's short, I feel like most likely you're able to remember them. And I wanted to share some examples of mantras. So an example would be, I am enough. And I also want to say that mantra is usually, um, you're saying, you're saying, you're, you're saying the mantra to yourself. Like, I feel like it gives you like more power. And so examples would be like, I am enough or I am strong or I got this or I am successful in everything that I do. And the list goes on and on and on. And my personal mantra, well, I have a couple of different ones, but the one mantra that I really love and that I use like all of the time is, I don't know how, but I know I will. And that's kind of how I live my life. I have thrown myself into so many things that I have no idea how I'm going to do it but I know I can do it. And so whenever I say that affirmation, it just kind of gives me the confidence and the motivation to really, to really go after whatever it is I am diving into. Um, and I actually want to open up the floor right now. If any of you have a mantra that you use, I would love for you to share it with us. So maybe other people can get some ideas of a personal mantra. Does anyone want to share? Um, so I, uh, I do like bullet journaling kind of, and there's always like a theme of the year. So like this year, my like theme or like mantra was do it scared. And really just like anytime it applies, like if I'm stressed, do it stressed or do it like whatever, you know, like if it's, I think there's anything holding you back, it's just do it with that. Anyways, I guess. That's great. Um, when I meditate, this is Shri, when I meditate, um, I, my mantra is um, peace, joy, love. And I just, I feel like I, I've manifested that in my life through just meditating on those words. That's great. Anyone else want to share before we continue? Can you? You guys can drop it in the chat if you're not. So, yeah, yeah, totally. You can totally. Let me pull up the chat. Okay. And Gina, I don't mind sharing. Uh, this is Mariah. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Also a part of Article Lab. Something that I've really been um, practicing for the past, like, I would say five years, it's really simple. My mantra has been just make it happen. Um, and, like, no matter what, and kind of aligned with what Natalie was saying earlier, like, 
no matter what you're feeling, just make it happen, whether you're, you know, all these outside things you cannot control, but you can control what you do and, um, and how you feel and just acknowledge that, embrace what you want and, and just make that happen uh, for yourself and others. And so, um, yeah, all of this, I guess, is a manifestation of that, you know, just believing in ourselves and um, working together, you know, in my own life. And so yes. yeah, make it happen. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. And like you all have shared, most of us, we say these these phrases out loud. And I feel like when you say phrases out loud, you kind of help will it into your life. And on top of that, you kind of just like hype yourself up. You, you always need to be able to go with thin and kind of like drown out the noise and hype your own self up. Um, but how to use your mantra, it's so important for you guys to write things down in general. All. write down your goals write down your dreams write down write down everything um but for this case write down your mantra and read it all of the time and read it all of the time that it becomes so ingrained that it's not even anything whenever you need it as a reminder whenever you start to doubt yourself for example, if you're nervous about anything, such as a job interview or like hosting a workshop, um, I suggest like looking in the mirror and say to yourself these, these affirmations. So look at yourself and say, I believe in me, or I got this, or, you know, I can do this. And you do that enough, you're going to start to believe it and you're going to start manifesting things in your life for sure. Um, does anyone have any questions about mantras right now before we get into music? No, we're good. Okay, music, my like favorite thing in the world. Like I cannot live without music. I have music playing all of the time. I have multiple playlists. Music is such a big part of my life, and it actually is a very, very, very big part of my creative process whenever I'm painting or hand lettering, or even if I'm working, like doing design and um, like development work, um, it's, it's powerful and it like helps me be more creative and on, on task, and so, just kind of wanted to give you um, a brief overview of like my understanding of music and how I think it's important and how it affects us. Um, so first of all, we all know like music is very primal and it affects each of us in a very personal, unique way. And what I found is the music you listen to when you're a kid essentially becomes your comfort music. And when you grow up, that music will become part of who you are, tied in with the memories and growing up. Um, like I said before, like music is a very, very important part of my life. And it often helps me restore myself and it inspires me all of the time. And that's why it's so important. And for me, like, whenever I think about my childhood, I was surrounded by music, like all of the time. My dad was a musician and like we played music every single day. Not only did he play music, like, you know, through his records, but he actually played live music. And so I grew up with music being on all of the time. And I was exposed to different types of music. Um, specifically world music and like reggae music and i feel like every single time that i listen to reggae music no matter what mood i'm in no matter what's going on whenever i start to like hear that like i just become like overwhelmed with like love and peace and i'm just like in a good mood and it definitely is linked to whenever I was a child and I used to listen to that kind of music. And so that's how, that's how powerful it really is. 
And in addition to like the effects that we kind of all know how music plays on us, I wanted to share some actual like scientific proven effects of music. Um, it can aid in pain reduction. Music eases pain because it releases um, opioids, which is like the body's natural pain relievers. Um, it can also alleviate stress by low lowering cortisol levels, which is a hormone released in response to stress. And I feel like out of all of these effects, for me at least, um, the greatest effect has been my memory because music evokes emotion and emotion can bring with it memory and it brings back the feelings of life when nothing else can at least for me i feel like most people would agree with that but like i said whenever reggae music comes on for example and i might not be having a great day or i might be like in a mood as soon as i hear that like everything just kind of like releases and i feel good i feel happy and so it's proven that how um effect effective music can be now music's role in creativity is some is one of my favorite topics just because music is such an essential part of my creative process um i'm going to share uh, a little bit of uh insight into my creative process when it comes to painting because not not many people know this but i'm going to share it with you so i always paint with to music and there's always a moment in time in the process where i start to feel like maybe i have direction in the painting um and I've kind of like honed in and started to like listen and really register certain um, feelings or certain signs because whenever I start to feel like a painting has direction or is near completion, almost every single time a song comes on and it triggers some kind of like memory or feeling and I have learned to really like embrace that and to like listen to that and it happens every single time and part of my process of um, completing a painting is learning to recognize those feelings whenever a song comes on and it's actually how I am able to name my work like I'm not maybe a few of you know but all of my artwork is actually named um from a song and it's that song that uh that comes on that triggers like these these emotions and like really helps me find direction and so that's just a little little insight into my process but um anyway music's role in creativity um Music, like I said, is really powerful, and I feel like it helps induce mind wandering. I feel like no matter what you're doing, it allows you to detach yourself from the activity at hand, and it leaves you um, open to explore and to roam without conscious direction. Um, music is universal, and it's powerful, and contentment stress and creativity are all intertwined and the more present and less stressed we are the more creative we tend to be and like vice versa like i know for me whenever i'm listening to music and i get like in a mood it's usually like a happy mood or a um motivation I'm motivated it's like all of these positive qualities that I kind of derive from music and I can't tell you how many times I've listened to a song and it sparks a memory or the rhythm like inspires me like something inspires me something changes and it, it it's almost like it opens up my creativity to things that I probably wouldn't have ever realized without that role of music. 
And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's super powerful. Um, now, choosing your music is a different thing. Um, for me, I have multiple playlists. Depending on what I'm doing, I have a playlist for when I'm like coding, like a website, I have a playlist for when I'm painting, I have a playlist for whenever I'm cooking dinner or like hosting a dinner. Like I have all of these playlists to kind of like evoke certain like emotions because I'm very much into like setting a vibe, creating a vibe. Um, but as far as like creating and like doing hand lettering, um, I think listening to music you've heard before, or at least by an artist that you recognize, relaxes as precisely because you're not threatened, you know, you already know it or you're familiar with it. And I feel like those positive emotions end up facilitating like ideas that you may or may not have thought of without music. And not only does listening to music that you're familiar with help, but also instrumental music can also help us relax and like welcome us into a flow state. And the music that you're, you're listening to right now that I have is just like some lo-fi hip hop music, like beats to relax, to create to, that isn't distracting. Um, and I feel like, I don't know, I feel good. Like, I feel like I could be in flow. Like if I'm creating right now, I feel like I can create to this music and just kind of like roll with it. Um, does anyone want to share their favorite music or perhaps if you have a certain style or genre of music that you listen to whenever you're creating or whenever you're doing like a certain activity, does anyone want to share what they what they listen to? Um, I guess um, more on the the level of like Erica Badu, um, Jill Scott. Um, what's her name? Tracy Chapman, you know, that oh, kind, yeah. of, uh, kind of vibe. This phone is going off. So, <laughs> like, how do they make you feel? Um, relax, like, just puts me apart from anything else, you know, it's like, I can be listening, it can come on the radio and I immediately go into this like peaceful mode, you know, just like, you know, grooving and just thinking about doing all kinds of things. And, you know, like you say, creativity, you get, your mind gets to thinking and creating all sorts of um, avenues to, uh, like you say, paint or, just sit there and chill and just think about what you're doing in life, where you are in life, you know, that type of thing. I actually feel the same way about those particular artists that you mentioned. Like, I love them. Um, and it definitely, like, puts you in a mood. It's a lot of other ones, you know, but it's like, and even, you talked about reggae. And yeah. I even have... Um, uh, I think it's still Post that I listen to. Um, that's a good soundtrack if you're into to reggae. And um, but I love music. I'm 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 a musician by heart, by uh, nature. <laughs> and um, music, like you say, is universal, and anybody can create from that. Right. What's up? Does anyone else want to share like the music they listen to and the effects that they that that they get? Oh, this is Mariah. Can I share? Yeah. I love uh like creating to Kaytranada, um, especially like oh, yeah. Yeah, like his beats, he just like his edits on on like a lot of his cover tracks are amazing um he's even like covered jill scott a few times and like mm -hmm. like golden tom mish 
he makes like really really dope yeah i love him i actually went through a period i uh i uh created like a specific piece of artwork and i just blasted him like for the entire duration of that particular piece right like he can sing and he also produces his own like album which is amazing yeah and robert glasper if i want to feel like a little jazzy and bring it down a little bit oh robert yeah glasper, amazing like he's he's like one of the best contemporary jazz artists right now so that's what's up three those are my top threes for sure cool does anyone else want to share okay we'll move on um so part of this uh workshop I wanted to um, basically teach you guys how to create a playlist on Spotify. Um, I'm not too sure if you all already have a Spotify account, but Spotify is what I use on a daily basis. It's how I create playlists. It's how I share playlists to family and friends. And I am super loyal to, to the brand. Um, and so I don't know if you all have your phones and I'm sure some of you are on your phones, but I kind of just wanted to go through the process of setting up an account real quick, if that's okay. Um, are you guys good? So if you don't already have Spotify, this is definitely for you. So after you download the app, Basically, you will, where it says step one, you will have the option of signing up with email, signing up with Facebook, or signing up with Apple. And for me, I signed up with Facebook. And when you click continue with Facebook, in step two, you will be prompted to continue as, as, as yourself, like whatever you're logged into. And from there, it automatically just like, sets you up so from there you don't have to do like anything else and i love setting i love like syncing my spotify to facebook because spotify has that like community or like social aspect so you can find your friends on facebook um you can see what they're listening to you can collaborate on playlists with them um it's just fun and so i personally would recommend that you create the account using like a Facebook, um, your Facebook account. So then once you actually set up a Spotify account, um, you can then begin to create a playlist. And for those of you that use Spotify, you already know how to do this, but for those of you that don't, it's super easy to create a playlist. And I actually created a playlist for this workshop called Mantras and Music. You can, you can go on Spotify and search for it, but I will also send, we're gonna send you all like a link for the recording and the PDF, but we'll also send you a link to the playlist that I created. Um, but just to give you a quick rundown on how to create a playlist, once you're in, once you're in the app, all you have to do is go to your music and it's really easy to set up. Step one is to create a playlist. Step two is to, um add songs to your playlist give it a name and then from there you're able to search for songs and then add it so in step four i have um like on your phone the interface will show a plus sign and a circle and that's how you can add it to your playlist um it makes it really really easy and simple to create and edit and share your playlist, but this is pretty much all you have to do in order to create a playlist. And then as you're kind of like listening to music, let's say like a song comes on that you really like, if you're on your phone, you will be able to see like three little dots in the upper right hand of your, of your screen. And then it will give you an option of adding it to your playlist. And once you do that in step three, you're able to choose which playlist you want to add it to. And that's it. That's all you got to do. And um, for me, 
while we're talking about playlists. I mean, you don't have to use Spotify, but for me, whenever I'm creating, I always listen to my playlist on shuffle mode because I feel like it's all about how you actually hear the music. And I feel like if you're like me and you're obsessed with music and you listen to playlists like all of the times, eventually you're gonna know like exactly what's on that playlist, right? And so I feel like for me, whenever I'm creating, I always put it on shuffle mode because it opens a space for intuition while creating. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've been creating, I've been painting, and then a song comes up and it triggers something and it totally changes the direction of my work. And I feel like if you listen to your playlist in like chronological order or like how you created it, like you know like what song is going to come on next. And so when you put it in shuffle mode, that just like kind of gives you an element of surprise and may evoke something in you that you normally wouldn't have experienced if you already knew what was coming. You know what I'm saying? So that being said, I wanted to um, share some of my uh, practice, some of my ritual, because in addition to having a mantra and kind of setting the mood with music, I find that having a ritual really um, helps me not only with creativity, but just like giving me the space to have time for myself. Um, but traditionally, a ritual is like an actual physical act about a spiritual connection that helps you into enter into a process smoother and it releases the need to know how things work which i feel like a lot of us have a problem with like wanting to know how things work all of the time um but having a ritual like invites your attention to be placed on something else and essentially a ritual will basically help you train yourself and it helps you recognize the steps so you can kind of like do your thing. And while a ritual can't substitute a strong, disciplined, creative practice, it totally enhances one. And it helps enhance certain things in my life, um, which I'm gonna give you examples of. So what I considered a ritual, like I said, like it's this like physical act of like, a spiritual connection and so examples of my rituals every single day like as soon as I wake up I have this like daily gratitude practice where I am very aware of like life and that I was able to wake up and so I usually the first thing that I usually think of is like thank you for allowing me to wake up right and then whatever is on my mind at that time um i just give gratitude for so like for example if i'm making my bed sometimes i don't do this all of the time i make my bed all the time but i don't i don't always like give gratitude but i like to use the example of making my bed when i'm making my bed i really take my time and I'm very mindful and very aware of the fact that first of all I have a bed and then I break it down and I and I and I and I am very grateful that not only do I have a bed but I have clean sheets or I have pillows um I have hands to actually help me make my bed and so during this process I just say thank you or i'm very grateful of these things because i feel like we lose sight of a lot of things in life and we take a lot of things for granted and something as simple as making your bed and realizing those things can really help put you into a frame of mind of of gratitude and i also pray as well um i don't I don't spend a lot of time praying, but 
it's like usually after I do my gratitude practice, it just leads into prayer, just like automatically. Um, also, another example of one of my rituals is basically any time that I begin work, whether it's being at work and you know getting on my computer or um, hand lettering or painting. Every single time, I have to make sure that my area is clean and that everything is organized. It's just like, it's just like this physical act of making sure things are like kind of in order because that helps me kind of get into a state of mind where I'm like ready to work because I feel like at ease that my place is like organized. And then another example of a ritual, um, particularly when I'm painting and particularly when I'm in my studio, every time I'm ready to begin, the first thing I do is I set my phone to silent and then I, I hook up my, like, my phone to my speaker and I, and I play my music on shuffle mode and then I take my shoes off and usually I work with my, with my canvases on the ground because that's just like, I do action painting. I do like very intuitive like movements and I'm expressive. And so part of my process is like walking around my work a few times to kind of like get familiar with it again or just to say like, hello. Like I know it might sound silly, but like whenever you're working on something and then you go back the next day or might, it might be a week. I like to just kind of like ease into it. And that's the way that I do it is I kind of like walk around my work a few times. Um, so those are examples of my rituals. Does anyone want to share examples of any practices or rituals that you all do? Um, for me, um, this is Mariah again. For me, I love tea like in the mornings or right before bed. Um, but also like before I start like creating, um, like, like ginger tea, turmeric teas, chamomile, those are like my favorites with some honey and some lemon. And that kind of gets me into like a, just like a relaxed mood. And of course my music, uh, you know, letting Alexa know what kind of vibe I'm going for. And then, yeah, just starting it, starting the day that way or my creative process that way. Yeah. It really helps you kind of like center yourself, right? Anyone else want to share? For me, my um, my morning ritual is as soon as I wake up, I try and make sure I drink a lot of water and then I'll um, eat breakfast, but then I will transition and do a meditation. Um, and I've been using the Calm app, but I mean, that's because it's, super convenient it gives me a 10 minute meditation but there's many different um meditations that i've tried that i think are awesome and then i will just journal um and i think that helps to like really clear my head and like <laughs> anything that i might be stressed about or worried about i'm able just to kind of get it down on paper and it's just a very freeing feeling afterwards yeah yes, yes. Yeah. Anyone else want to share their ritual? Um, I don't know if it can be called a ritual really. I just kind of like every, pretty much every night, I like just make sure everything's like put away or like before I leave for work or go to work or whatever, my bed's like made and all this stuff. Like for me, like my room is very like important to me for it to be like, just to feel like clean or just like fresh, you know? Like even if like it doesn't, there's not like an intense cleaning, just like making my bed feel like, you know, really good to come back to versus yeah. not being like disarrayed. I feel that. It's so funny because I'm like really, really, really good about making my bed. There has been a few times, like, I don't know, certain circumstances that I just got to go. But even when I do go, when, when I return home from wherever I am from, you know, I will make my bed. Yeah. Even like I know I'm about to get back into it. Like there's just something about it. Like I still gotta make my bed. Yeah, exactly. Even yeah. if it's just like folding my sheets at the end, like yeah. I have to do something so that it doesn't, you know. Yeah. Yeah. 
that's 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 great um and just like thinking about ritual and like my childhood and my grandma because my grandma was like the most inspirational person in my life and I didn't realize how many life lessons that she like indirectly taught me um and I didn't realize how many seeds she kind of like planted in me when I was younger but when I think about ritual I think about how she would get up super early in the morning and she would make her coffee and sit down and at this time in her life because she was a buddhist like for a period of time and then she converted to christianity and so after she had converted to christianity she she had this like prayer book like and she she would she would have notes but for like an hour she would take her time getting ready sipping on her coffee going through her prayer book and like praying and I remember like just like always kind of like walking by because I would get ready for school and like just seeing her do her thing. And I remember just like always knowing or feeling that I need to let her have that time. Like I should not interrupt that time. Um, I didn't at the time I didn't realize like why she would get up so early when she would have like a very full day. Like I would think like. I would sleep in for as long as I, as long as I could, but I realized that was her ritual before she started her day because she had very long days. And I realized that was just like kind of her way to center herself and to kind of like get into the flow of things before like the noise started like happening around her. And so rituals are very powerful all right now that we've talked about mantras and music and ritual um i'm going to get into hand lettering so first of all i want to make sure you all are aware of like the difference between hand lettering and calligraphy so hand lettering is the art of drawing letters and it's a skill that can be learned no matter how neat and messy your handwriting is. And hand lettering has many, many different styles. And calligraphy is its own art form. Like calligraphy is more um, specific and you definitely have like a specific style and you use more specific pens and inks with calligraphy. And for this workshop and what we're doing and what I do is hand lettering. And so I just wanted to make sure you guys are aware that there is a difference between hand lettering and calligraphy. Um, but the beauty of hand lettering is that you can pick up whatever you have around. Pencil, pen, Um, and for this particular workshop, I don't want to get like too in depth into hand lettering and like everything that comes with it because it is, it, it is an art and there's definitely lots of things that you can learn. Um, but for this workshop, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of basically understanding the anatomy of letters so you can so you can make your design like look balanced and beautiful and so for today we're just gonna focus on four basic principles like there are many there are many many principles but today I just felt like you all just need to learn like the four basic principles which is the baseline the X line the ascender line and the descender line now the baseline is where all of your letters will sit and this this image will illustrate where that baseline is um basically the main body of each letter will rest upon this line and from there you will base other aspects of letter anatomy so just remember the baseline is basically just where all the letters sit 
Now, the X type, I personally think this might be the most useful thing to learn about hand lettering. At least I use it whenever I do my work. But the X height is the line where the tops of the lowercase letters reach. And like, as you can see in this illustration, we see like the lowercase E and the X uh, and the red lines, that's considered the X height. And it's actually the height of a lowercase x in a typeface, so that's why it's called the x line. But basically, all lowercase letters should sit on the baseline and reach up to the x line. And I feel like if you were to come away with this, learning anything, I think you should really focus on this. Now, the next principle that I want to talk about is called the ascender line. And basically what the ascender line is, is like all of these letters that have these little like tails, um, like K, H, T, all of these letters, just think like as you're like ascending, like going up. And so this is what the ascender lines are. And then the opposite, is the descender line. So just think of it like going down descender. So these letters are like G, Q, Y, and as I have the illustration of a P. So that is considered a descender line, okay? Um, so with that being said, understanding how anatomy of letters work, will really help make your lettering more consistent and more advanced. And like I said, like, there's a whole like world of hand lettering and you can study hand lettering and there's many books and classes and all this stuff. But like, as long as you know, like the super basics of hand lettering, um, you're able to kind of create designs that look consistent and the quicker that you practice and implement these like basic principles, um, the faster you'll develop. And I have this illustration to the right of different, um, different terminologies basically um, that I did not mention just because I just don't think it's important to focus on now. Maybe if you want to develop your hand lettering skills, then of course you can like learn more about that. But like I said, you really just need to focus on the baseline, the X line, the ascender line, and the descender line. In addition, you really want to be mindful of the line weight. And the line weight refers to the thickness or thinness of a line. Um, I have an example of different line weights of like thin, medium, and heavy. Um, but basically, if the line is thin, the weight is lighter. If the line is thick, the weight is heavier. And whenever you're creating lettering with a font that varies line weight stroke to stroke, you really should be mindful of making sure you're consistent so that everything just like looks good. Now, downstrokes and upstrokes is like another element of hand lettering. And really this pertains to when you're using brushes or um, when you are doing um, more advanced lettering. But I thought it was important to mention just because I'm pretty sure most of you might wanna do like script lettering or are probably gonna use markers to create your design tomorrow. But basically, downstrokes, the strokes are basically how you pull your pen or your marker, right? And so naturally, when you're writing, you are using less weight when you go up, and you're using more weight when you're going down. And the little illustration that I have kind of shows that, where you see like the thin upstrokes going up and the thick downstrokes going down. And, um, you know, if you are wanting to use marker or wanting to use a particular style, I think this is like really important to learn 
and also to practice because this does take a little bit of practice to kind of get right. Um, like I said, like at the end, like after the session, after we process this video, so you're able to watch it later, we will also be um, emailing you a PDF and the PDF will look similar to this image that I have. And the PDF is basically a bunch of hand letter angels because the only thing, the only, the only thing that matters is that you practice, right? And so these drills can help you work on these like down strokes and like up strokes, and it can aid as you learn how to tr tr transition between strokes or curved lines for certain letters. And so this PDF will include three different styles that you can practice, and I will show you basically the direction of like how you're really supposed to do it, and then like. I'm going to have you repeat certain letters and then eventually you're going to put together like words. Um, but the drills is basically to help you kind of get into that like repetitive action um, with your hands. And then lastly, we are going to add embellishments to your hand lettered piece. And these are a few examples of um, hand lettered pieces that I've done in the past. Um, as you can see, they're, they're a little bit different. So like the one on the right, I just kind of like embellish my font or my type with like little extended swirls on the end of the letters. And I also incorporated just like a couple different lines here and there. So those are considered embellishments. The second one in the middle, I did these kind of like droplets, kind of like all over, almost like a puzzle, kind of like fitting things in. And then the one on the on the very right, um, I did some line work in the form of creating flowers and just like kind of like little little shapes. But really, it's like whatever you're naturally drawn to, whether it's like swirls or flowers or lines, whatever you wanna do that's considered an embellishment, it will only enhance the letters that you draw, right? And here are a few hand lettering styles. And I just wanna say like, this is just like a few of like hundreds of different lettering styles, but this is, these are the, these are the most common lettering styles that you'll see um, people who do hand lettering do. And also you'll see a lot of fonts kind of um, that are similar to this style. And for the PDF that I am going to send you all after this, I am going to basically show you um, how to do scripts, how to do uh, sans serif, and then also how to do like simple serif, which simple serif is more, um, it's more of a, like a traditional font and it's fonts that you would probably see like in a newspaper. Um, but I encourage you all to, here's a train. I encourage you all to kind of just like go online or go on Instagram and like just check out different fonts and see which ones you like, um, as well as your own like natural hand lettering style. I would encourage you all to practice like a couple different styles. So like do print, do cursive, and then perhaps you can do something you've never done before, but you need to practice and, and, and find what you're, you're more comfortable with. Um, so that's it, really. Um, I do have some homework for you all um, for tomorrow's session because, like I said, tomorrow's session is going to be really hands-on. And so for, for tonight or tomorrow morning or wherever, whenever you want to do this, um, definitely review the PDF that I will send so you can practice your hand lettering drills. And I also want you all to create a playlist on Spotify that makes you feel good. Some of you may already have a playlist, so you don't really have to do that. And like I said, like, 
browse online, like Instagram, Pinterest, Etsy, wherever else for inspiration. Um, if you're on Instagram or Pinterest, you can simply just like type in like hand lettering or hand done type or typography and you will see a bunch of different styles. You can even get on my Instagram and kind of like scroll back and kind of see like the styles that I've done. Although I do have to let you guys know that the style of hand lettering that I do, I've kind of like created it myself. Um, I learned the basics of hand lettering and kind of like what to do and just for my knowledge, you know, but like with everything, like I'm the type of person that I learn the rules and then like I break them because that's just how I am. But also because I want to be original and I want to develop my own style and I want to do what works for me. So uh, feel free to find inspiration, but ultimately you're able to, you know, do your own thing. Um, in addition to browsing online stuff, I recommend that you browse offline. So if you have magazines around or books, if you're going out later to like a park, anywhere, just like look for inspiration. And then uh, I want you all tonight and tomorrow to spend some time choosing your personal mantra and select the words and phrases that we'll use next time. And it's really important to choose with intention because I feel like that is really important whenever you're creating something is to have that like intention already set before you're creating. So it helps kind of guide what you're doing. And I feel like, especially when you're designing a mantra, having an intention will only amplify like how powerful that mantra is for you. And then lastly, just spend time doodling and sketching and playing. Don't worry about being perfect. Um, start over as many times as you need, but just like get familiar with like the tools that you're using. So get familiar with your pens and your markers and the paper and just like go wild, just like have fun. And that's pretty much all I have um, for today's session. Um, I'm gonna, let Nath and Mariah kind of take over to talk about more of their organization. So go ahead. Thank you for that, uh, Gina. Thank you for this session. Um, I feel like we got like a nice introduction on like your process and like how you just start to open up um, as an artist. And so thank you for that. Um, and so, yeah, we, um, we have another workshop tomorrow on Sunday. So one, same time, 1 to 3 p.m. So we'll be actually, like, we'll be diving in into the art of uh, hand lettering. So uh, this is a space if you guys have any uh, questions uh, before we wrap up. Uh, for Gina, before you start your homework and hand lettering. <laughs> you can unmute yourself or you can um, drop in the chat here. Do you have any questions for Gina? Mm -hmm. right, like if you have any questions time. now, you can always just like hit me up, yeah. text me, message me on Instagram. Well, um, after, yeah, well, after this, we're also having an IG uh, live uh, at three o'clock. So uh, you guys are welcome to uh, join us. We'll be dropping uh, the handle here in the chat here, but it's artofcollab.orl. So we'll be having a nice interview Q and A with, um, with Gina. And so you guys are welcome to have like any questions about who she is as an artist um, and just kind of like more, more personal questions for her work and her art. As you guys know, she's a hand letter artist, but she's also a uh, designer. Um, and so if you have any questions before tomorrow's session, definitely join us right after this um, on Instagram Live. Um, and let's see here. Yeah. So right in the chat there, articlelab.orl. So that's where you guys can join us at three o'clock. Um, but like Gina said, definitely dive into uh, calligraphy, YouTube videos, Google, Pinterest. Um, we'll be emailing you guys. Um, and also, because you guys joined the session, you're going to be entered into winning a, a free print by Gina herself. Um, so she'll be 
uh, doing a nice giveaway. Uh, so we'll be announcing the artist on tomorrow's workshop at the very end there. So um, if we don't have your email, make sure you drop it in the chat here. Um, I see a few folks who probably didn't um, who just joined in from the email blast, but um, if we don't have your email, make sure we have it so we can enter you into the drawing. Um, you, you're welcome to, um, to chat to us privately if you like. Um, but yeah, we're excited. Uh, Gina, are you able to like share what, uh, which print that'll be for the giveaway? Yeah, so I, well, um, I'm going to, I have multiple prints. So honestly, like I'm down to like give away anything, but the print that I was going to give away, let me go back where it says stay hungry, stay foolish. That was the print that I was going to give away. Um, but whoever ends up a little bit more tomorrow whoever ends up winning like honestly like i have multiple prints so you just like pick from your pick from the letter exactly so yeah definitely um you know prepare for tomorrow any like recommendations that you have like as far as like what kind of pins we should bring any markers oh yeah let me get my it's like Honestly, you guys, you can you can use whatever you have on hand. You don't have to have fancy paper or fancy markers or pencils. But my personal favorites, I'm gonna pull it out right now and pull it out. So for paper, I love um, this brand. Well, not necessarily this brand, but I love this paper, it's called Bristol. And it's just like very, very smooth and it's so nice and it's like thick. So you don't have to worry about like your pen or marker bleeding through, but it's just very nice and it makes it easy for you to um, flow with your, for, with, your, with your pens. And um, I'm pretty loyal to like certain brands just like by default, like, if I love something, then usually I'll just like stick to it. Um, so I use these pens. Um, the brand is called like Pigma and they're different. There's various like weights, various kinds. So there's pens and there's like, they have markers and stuff like that. And um, you can get these on Amazon. You can get it at Sam Flats if you're in Orlando. You can get it at Michael's. Any, like most places have these pens. Um, I personally um, only work with pens. Like I don't even like work with pencil or like marker unless I'm doing something, um, unless I'm doing something like for a commission, then like I'll take a little bit of time to like plan it out. But like, yeah, these are, these are the pens that I use. And I also really, really, really love um, this gold leafing pen because sometimes I'll add like embellishments to my lettering. Um, it's just like a gold leafing pen, but it's, it's by Krylon and it's called 18 karat gold leafing pen. And again, like you can find this pen anywhere as well, like Michael's, Sam Flats, Amazon. Um, but that, yeah, those are the tools. These are the pens and markers that I use. Amazing. So again, um, these are just recommended uh, supplies and things that Gina loves. But um, one thing that I've, I was able to find, I don't know if anybody has ever been to Five Below, but they have a really good like marker set with like different type of bristles for brushes. Um, and they're just $5. So if, if you guys have a Five Below in your area and you want to Get some nice pens you can do that or you could just use your regular pens like pencils or uh, a sharpie marker if you don't have access to different um, supplies but again these are just little things that uh that could be helpful to like your process for tomorrow so right you started off with regular markers so i'm sure you know yeah i started out with like really really cheap you know, whatever, whatever pen that I stole or whatever, whatever I had on hand. That's what I started out with. Start with what you have. Um, so we're excited for tomorrow. Uh, so it'll be Sunday the 26th from 1 to 3 p.m. Um, again, bring your friends. This is something that's open to all ages. Um, bring your friends and family to the session and uh, 
yeah, we can't wait. Can't wait to see who's going to win your uh, print as well. Like, really excited. Yeah. So we might have maybe more than one winner. So yeah, for sure. Tomorrow. All yeah. right. And then right after this, three o'clock, we'll be on, once again, we'll be on IG Live doing a special Q&A interview with Gina. So mm. gather your questions for then, okay? Um, before we, there's a couple other things I kind of want to mention before we end the session. Um, I want to kind of talk more about Art of Collab Orlando um, and what they're doing. So like, I, like we mentioned before, we did a mural project earlier this year and um, we have an actual donor wall. And so if any of you feel compelled to kind of like donate to that, we will be writing names on the wall. Actually, I will be doing the writing. Like I will be actually like lettering your name on the wall. So I think that is cool. Um, and also like this workshop is a part of an actual summer series. And so donations are greatly appreciated because it just like helps assist artists like me with materials that they need in order to teach a workshop because these workshops are free. And so um, we're kind of using our own materials and supplies to do these things. And so whatever you want to donate is greatly, greatly appreciated. And um, yeah, and uh, next week, my dear friend Nikki is hosting another workshop. It's going to be a visual journal workshop and also a, a poetry workshop. And so that's next weekend. I will be there just because I find these topics like super fascinating and Nikki is like amazing. She's like the best. And so I feel like if you're going to do any workshop, like make sure you sign up for hers. And then the following, um, uh, I don't know if it's like the following weekend, but like definitely like mid August, we also have another workshop uh, taught by AJ. And he was one of the muralists at the mural project. And he is like the sweetest guy like ever. He's like so pure and like he loves art and he loves teaching and he loves sharing. And so what he is going to do is teach you all like the art of symbolism and painting and using various mediums to convey emotion through art. So that's gonna be another hands-on workshop. And like I said, like these are all free workshops. So I really, really highly recommend that you all register for these workshops because you're gonna come away um, with a lot of knowledge and you know, who knows what, what would develop in your life by attending these workshops. So just wanted to kind of give you all like a shout out. And last but not least, I wanted to share this video that I think is super powerful and it totally um, relates to the idea of mantras and how we can use mantras to really empower ourselves. And so I'm gonna play this video, and then after the video, we're going to end the session, and at three o'clock, we will be getting on IG Live. So if you wanna join us on IG Live, that's where we'll be. But thank you so much for attending. I had a lot of fun, and I appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time out of your day to join us. And I hope to see all of you tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna to be very hands-on. It's gonna be super fun. and. Um, yeah, so thank you all and uh, stay tuned for this video and then I'm gonna, and then we're gonna end the, um, the, the meeting. Oops. You're worth it. Three words we have all heard at least a thousand times, right? You're worth it. But do you really understand what that means? It's a beautiful reminder to us all that we have worth. You have reason and rarity. There is value in each and every one of us, including you. That is precious.
precious even on the days you might not feel it, you never depreciate in value. Those words are there to remind you. So to all those watching who feel like that or have ever felt like that, focus on what I'm about to say and repeat after me. I'm worth it. Okay? Maybe that felt great or perhaps that felt weird. Let's go again. First, take a deep breath and let it out. Forget the naysayers and silence the critics, even if the harshest words are the ones you say to yourself. Do not help yourself and this time speak it louder, really loud. I'm worth it. And the next time you hesitate before going after something you want, the next time you blush and brush off a compliment, the next time you doubt your place in the world, in the workplace, in your home or in your own skin, say these words to yourself, I'm worth it. And I know you will always say it like you mean it. I'm worth it. Because you are and always will be. Got that? Yes. All right, that was it. I felt like, gosh, when I saw this video, I was so like taken back and I was just like, I wanted to share this with you all. I'm worth it. That's definitely a mantra. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. So think about this think about what you would like to letter tomorrow and uh i'll see you guys all tomorrow around this time see ya articlelab.org i'll see you at three o'clock y'all thank you for Bye, everyone Bye. Bye. Bye.